happened to be a first of hopefully many tutorials on Stata. This is the first tutorial. Obviously, it's going to be an introduction on how to use Stata and what it is and, and so forth. So what is Stata? Really, it's a programming language and a software package. And it's really a very powerful tool for doing uh, analysis of household survey data and other kind of uh, statistical analysis. So uh, let's just get started. So we have, we have several windows here. Uh, I am right now in the, typing in the command window. So I'm an example of what I should type. Foo, foo type three. Um, you can type all kinds of commands. Foo r is short for display. Uh, here is foo tutorial. You can type, you can just type text. Or if you could spell it right, tutorial. So that's a GI command, which is actually going to be very useful when you're for when you write programs and you want to do debugging. Um, now, for writing text, I like to use compound quotes because it looks smart when you use them, and it allows you to impose uh, better quotes on your text. For example, here are some double quotes, and the double quotes uh, show up right here and there. Now, whenever you type commands. They, uh, the results go in the results window, which is this window above the command window. On the left, you see the command history. It's one of the repeated commands. You can just click on it. And you can also, if you're on a Mac, now I'm doing this demo on a Mac, but also if you're a PC, when I get a PC to replace my dog bark, you can, on the Mac, you can type function page up. On the PC, you can probably just type page up or something uh, to go through this command history and your repeated commands uh, without having to type them over again. Okay. So we are going to use uh, compound quotes, and we're just going to type from now on. Um, and so I just want to put that out there now so that uh, you know why I do it rather than just using plain double quotes. Um, let's take a look at how Stata treats data. And we're going to look at the variables on Stata because it's slightly nuanced compared to what you are familiar with in the math class. Data is uh, actually treated like columns or, or vectors in Stata. So first we need to use a data set, and Stata comes in with Stata comes with built-in data sets that you can use, and to access them, we use this if use command. Now, one data set is called auto. So this command just loaded the built-in data set. Uh, now, on the right, you can see the variables that are in this data set. Another way to view them is to type D and enter. D is short for describe. And you can see that um, the, the list of variables are presented. Uh, on the left is a variable name, and that's how you refer to it when you're typing. And on the right here, you have the, uh, this is a description. This is a label. This is a variable label. You can label variables to give it some description. Um, you can also find out what notes there are in the data set, and this shows that this is from continuous reports. And uh, some other information that comes with D is it tells you what type of variable is it referring, is it integers, is it a floating point, is it decimal, what's that decimal place. Um, and uh, for categorical variables, you have you can have a value labeled. Now let's take a look at this, the categorical variable. Let's take a look at foreign. Um, let's just do tab foreign. So the foreign variable is really just a categorical variable that labels, that classifies uh, the observations um, as, you know, as, as a foreign or domestic. Now, this is going to make more sense when I when we browse the data. So if I want to just take a look at the data, I can type DRO for browse, and it'll open up the browser window. So these are all the variables along the top. Make, price, miles per gallon, what, seven years, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, these are all the observations. So there's this is the, this is the data point. And you can see red is uh, just means it's a text type of data. And then these are black is numerical. The now if you look at the foreign variable, it's actually a numerical variable. It's either zero, and zero corresponds to domestic. Zero has a value label of domestic. Right? And if I scroll down, there are foreign vehicles. And one, as you can see, one has a value label of foreign. So domestic. Zero, foreign, one. So I'm just going to close this data browser. Oh, just one more thing. Sometimes you'll see a dot here. And what a dot means is it's a missing value. So there's, you, like on household survey data, if there's a non-response, you might get a, you would get a dot there. Um, 
a missing value. There are, there are different types of missing values we can get to, and it's a little sophisticated with the missing values. But we won't look at that right now, maybe a little bit later uh, in, a, in another tutorial. So you cannot execute commands like uh, from a command window or running do files, which we'll get into later, while the browser is open or while the editor is open. And the editor is just a browsing window that allows you to change the data. If you look here, if you can't change the data, there's no way to look at it. So I'm just going to Apple W to close that. And the label for the variable forum, you can see, is origin. So let's do label list. It lists all the uh, labels in here. I'm just going to do label list origin. So it can't, ooh, actually the seven is. But since there's only one uh, value label defined, there is only a source origin anyway. So zero corresponds to domestic, and one corresponds to um, foreign. And so we saw that there are different uh, the types, uh, string, integer, float. Um, this is defined as bytes, so it's only going to be uh, zero and one, of course. So um, let's try doing something with some data. Let's generate a new variable, and let's let's suppose that. Uh, um, we want to generate uh, variables representing the number of gallons we have. So let's call it gallons. And we're just going to assign them uh, all a value of 5, let's say. Um, or actually, let's generate all of them this way. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll, we're going to change this manually. So let's do the edit. Edit is like brel, a browser command but it allows you to actually change the variable. So we can do uh, five, 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 two, four, seven, seven, oh, oh, I'm going to go too fast, six, six, eight, three, and I'll just leave the rest. There are a lot of entries, I don't want to do it manually. So then um, let's close the browsing window, and uh, this, this shows the uh, commands that are equivalent to what I just did manually by typing in the browser, it just replaced gallons uh, replace certain values at the uh, at different observation lengths, right? But what I'm going to do now is just replace everything. Okay, gallons equals five. And so let's browse that. Um, ooh, and then all the values for gallons is equal to five. So this is how data trees data. Every time you create a variable, every time you create a variable, you've ex you effectively make a column vector. And uh, let's try to do something else with these column vectors. So let's close the browser window so we can start typing again. Let's, uh, now that we've actually created this variable gallons, let's label this. So label variable gallons, and let's label it with something. Um, let's call it uh, gallons of gasoline available. Okay, so let's describe. Now we can see our variable gallons there. It's, uh, by default, we've made a sort of the same entries. And we have a variable label now, too. And so let's do something else. Let's generate a description. And that's going to be uh, miles per gallon times gallon. You don't have to type the whole variable name as long as it's uh, not ambiguous. Uh, if there's nothing else, it's like a three eight LLO. If there's no gal uh, galoons or galots, then you just type gallo, and it's going to generate this distance. So let's label that to label variable distance, and we don't have to type the whole thing. As let's see, compound double quotes and create distance is uh, distance is used after. And we have our distance variable from after the label. I always get to label the variable so that people know what we're talking about. And let's browse the data again. Okay, so we have uh, different distance you can go depending on how many gallons you have. This one for everyone. And what your miles, what kind of miles you can get. So 22 times 5, you just multiply these by 5, you'll get, you have to wait for 110. 
85 times 10 100 uh, it's going to be 75 um, so first of all it's just an element by element multiplication of this times this this times this if these numbers were different you wouldn't be all multiplied by 5 you might be able to get the numbers to match the gallons of course you change gallons now it won't change the difference you'd have to recalculate this one okay but this is just an <coughs> an illustration of how scalar trees work now there are certain things you can do is there like suppose you want to know what the average uh, um, of miles per gallon or, or distance is and you can do that pretty easily you can just use a summarize command and show up the sum it would sum uh, this bit okay so uh, the number of observations is 74 that's how many uh, we actually have we have 74 observations in our data set so uh, but if there was a missing value there missing value in mpg or in gallons then this number would be lower but the uh, but getting back to the summarize command you can see that the the mean of that vector the distance is 26.48 standard deviation is is given and it has some other information like min and max if you want more information just put the just put comma b after it and you can get uh, percentiles and a few other things. Uh, now let's try that on gallons. Uh, okay, now the mean is five because there's only five in here. Uh, the observations are only five. There's no standard, the standard deviation is zero because it's a quantum crossing between the variables. Now suppose you want to do something, uh, suppose you want to know what the uh, miles per gallon are from MPG. And you say that, you can see that the average uh, miles per gallon is 21.2 about. Now, what about for if you want to divide by 20 in domestic? So let's try that from MPG if foreign equals zero. This is for um, domestic vehicles. Oh, from MPG if foreign, did I spell it wrong? From MPG if foreign I, double equal, yes. Comparison is called a double equal. Okay, so then we can see that foreign, uh, the MPG is in foreign vehicles. Or for the domestic vehicles, and now let's try the uh, foreign vehicles. Okay, so let's get there. Now, instead of doing this manually, suppose there are many categories, whether they're foreign big vehicles, foreign small vehicles, domestic big, domestic small. Um, you can just uh, take the categorical variable and do the mean uh, for each of those uh, with one command. It would be by s by sort. So you do it by uh, your categorical variable foreign. End of quote. And S means sort because you know, sort of like this has been sorted for, you know, sort of requires that certain things be sorted before actually does certain calculations. And then we can do some uh, MPG. And we can see that, uh, oh, so for the foreign value being domestic, that is for domestic vehicles, we have 19.2 is the mean. And that's the same as up here, like if foreign equals zero, which is foreign, uh, which is for domestic vehicles. And 24.77273 is where uh, the values match. Now you can also do D, put it in D set. Okay. And uh, again, you get the same uh, information, uh, but, but more of it. Okay. Now let's go back to the sum command. Um, and I'm going to show you something about um, return values. So let's do sum MPG. And return list. So some commands are R class commands. And what they do is they store the results of the command in what are called return values. Now there are other kinds of um, values. There is E return. And then there is S return. Now the, uh, the sum command didn't put, do anything with that. It's an R class command and it stored uh, the results in the R value. But what's really cool about this is that you can actually have access to the mean and the, and the variance and, and the standard deviation. Um, so I could do this di r mean. Let's, you know, you can actually store that rather than actually ha having to go in here and copy and paste. Okay? And what, um, what you should note is that the return value is going to be the return value for the most recent command that actually, the most recent R class command, the most recent command that 
affected the, the return value. So if I type D, and then I type this, the R value, it's going to give me the new R values, and it's uh, the R values from the sum command are going to disappear. Um, now if I type Ray, and I put a browser, and then I close it, and I do return list, I still have the values from the D command because the browser command does not affect R values. Right? So let's go back to sum and cd. Okay. And return. So suppose we want to capture the variable dork somewhere. We can do we can store it in what's called a local macro. And now a, a macro or a global macro. Let's let's just use local macros for now. A macro is what you might think of as really what you used to think of variable as before. Let's say it's data store. Now you think of variable here as a vector of data. And um, but a local macro is what you would have thought of a variable as. So let's just think about local. Uh, let's call it. Uh, and uh, let's just call it X. Well, no, it's not really fit to fit this. MTG, and this won't be confused with a variable MTG because uh, I'll just show you. Local MTG equals uh, local, sorry, average MTG equals R mean. Okay, now suppose you want to refer to this average MTG. You would not do this. You would not do, do average MTG because, you know, if it's just presented like that, Stata thinks it's a variable, that is a vector variable, and it looks in the list here and says, oh, it's not there, so it is not found. You refer to it like this. You use the, you, you proceed it with a back tick, and at the end, you put an apostrophe. And voila. So our mean, which is 21.27, for reason, uh, repeating, is here. So you can display it by doing this. Well, let's just give a second token. PI average miles per gallon of, oh, I messed that one up, didn't I? Okay. Uh, PI average miles per gallon equals, well, let's use a, a compound first. Average miles per gallon equals at, uh, this and call it apostrophe and yeah well, unless you want to space it out and make it look more friendly there you go so that's sort of an introduction right now just a very brief introduction in the next file we will look uh, sorry in the next tutorial we will look at making do files because what we want to do is we want to put our commands in a in an ex in a in a do file, in a specific file that we can run over and over and see because that's typically how people program. They just write files and, and execute them. And of course, it's much more efficient. So that's the uh, that concludes the introduction to Stata. Do uh, play around with the built-in data sets. There's another one if you wanted to use. Just use life x. Uh, so life x. Ah, OK. Well, I'll just give you one more lesson. If you want to start using um, different data sets, you have to explicitly say to Stata, clear the data set if you already have a data set in memory. So um, we want to switch to the life extension from D data set. And you can see it's a different data set, a different variable. And it looks, it looks the most uh, in Stata's version of the World Bank. And then uh, it, it makes them, it m has the most like some of these uh, variables. If you look at this, what is region, country, cost growth? These are all explained. Region, country, average annual growth. Is safe water, um, you don't really know what it is. They didn't put a variable label. They put it in the notes for some reason. So you're doing notes, and you can look at safe water. Oh, okay, access to safe water. Percent of, of population has access to safe drinking water. Um, so anyway, there's just another data set that you can play around with. And if you want to load different data sets, you, uh, you would use the clear option after using with a comma, with a comma, and then you can just play around with different data sets. You do sum and tab. Um, tab is good for categorical variables, and then you can do cross tabs. You can do like you know if you have two categorical variables, you can tab for them in the second categorical variable. 
just doesn't have it just yet. Uh, but we'll look at using other data sets that do have it. And uh, hopefully we'll start using a, um, a household data household survey data set in, uh, in a tutorial too. Okay, so that's it. Good luck and looking forward to uh, your next tutorial. At least I am. I hope you are too.